I said I would do a video on her, and now I am. Cher Lloyd had one decent sized tit in 2012, and then a few minor ones afterwards, and then disappeared off the face of the earth. History has basically branded her a one hit wonder, and even her one big hit wasn't that big. But I've actually been curious about her for a few years now, and unlike our previous artists I looked at, she's not American. So there is a possibility that while I haven't heard much else from her, maybe she's really big in her home country. So let's find out. Whatever happened to Cher Lloyd? You got me, got me like this. So Cher got her big break on the seventh season of the UK version of The X Factor. Oh wait, UK. Seventh series? No shocker here, I haven't watched The X Factor, especially not the damn dirty British version. But thankfully, a lot of the clips were on YouTube. As you can see, here she is at 16, looking like a 40-year-old mom trying to look 25. My name's Cher. Is that your real name? Yeah. Did you call it because of Cher the singer? Uh, I think so. I think that's why my mum called me that. I'm not sure. Me mum really wanted me to grow up to sing. I wanted to be a phlebotomist. Took a look in the mirror, so what's up, what's up, what's up, yeah. Yeah, there's a reason I was never a fan of these singing competition shows. I don't really like listening to karaoke live, so watching it on TV never appealed to me. But she sounds fine. Not sure we needed a rap version of Viva La Vida. I need you to love, love to ring a ding from a cavalry. So yeah, I'm not a good judge for this kind of stuff, but Simon liked her, so that's something. Cher. That was a great, great audition. I don't trust you anymore, Simon, after sitting through that Christmas Carol movie. She would end up getting fourth place. Guess who got third? Lying naked on the floor. Yeah, this is the same season that gave us One Direction. Man, if these two came in third and fourth, I can't imagine what future Juggernaut came in first. Who? By the way, here she is performing with Will I Am. I didn't need to show you that, but I could. So after X Factor, she signed with Sicko Music and released her debut album Sticks and Stones in 2011, releasing four singles off of it. And the first one was this. That's a way to introduce yourself. This is Swagger Jagger, because 2011 likes songs about Mick Jagger and the word swag. It was pretty brave having your first single be something intentionally trying to be annoying. From the use of slang to those blaring horns to the fact that it samples the western folk song Oh My Darling Clementine. Swagger Jagger, Swagger Jagger. It even has a spot on the Wikipedia article on songs considered the worst ever. Personally, I kinda like it. Oh, don't judge me. You should know I have no taste by now. I'm not gonna tell you it's good. It's not. But it is such an early 2010s song, it's like a time capsule. Hell, when I looked it up on YouTube, this was the top comment. It went to number one in the UK and even did well in Ireland and Japan of all places, but did nothing here. A few months later, she released With Your Love featuring Mike Posner? Now that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. You got it, I can slow it down, speed it up how you want it, girl. I think Posner was still hot enough off his one hit a year earlier, but after this he would just disappear until 2016 when he dropped one of the saddest lyrics of all time. Took a pill in Ibiza to show a I was cool. Well, he's certainly not gonna think you're cool after this song. So much so that when they made another video for America, they just straight up cut him out. And he's American. It's not really bad, certainly less annoying than the last one, but also less memorable. Once again, it did decent in other countries, and in America it almost made it into the Hot 100. Don't worry though, she did eventually get on there with her next single. Boy, you can say Back. 
Watch You Back is perfectly annoying. Where Swagger Jagger was way too much and With Your Love wasn't obnoxious enough to be memorable, this is just annoyingly catchy enough without going overboard. It's about a chick who breaks up with her boyfriend thinking she can do better, and then when she sees him with another girl, she gets jealous and wants to get him back. So yeah, we're listening to a villain. In fact, this was big around the same time as somebody that I used to know. I feel like this is what the guy in that song thinks his ex is going through. You broke up with me, well, you'll come crawling back. And the song knows it. Hell, in the video she gets arrested. At least the American one. So yeah, I'd say the song held up okay. Not one I'd go back to a lot, but I'll stick up for it. Interesting note though, the UK version actually has a guest verse by someone named Astro. Might as well check that one out. We used to be, but now it's a separation between you and me. Well, actually, he was about 15. Three years younger than she was. Like, I'm sorry, if these two were dating, then she should be arrested. Yeah, I'll stick with the US version, which only peaked at number 12, which is weird. I remember hearing it so much. Her final single off that album was a friendship song called Oath. Wherever you go, just always remember that you got a home for now. This is probably her best single. It's catchy and just a good, wholesome song about being friends and all the fun and trouble you get into. So hard, your dad's new car. Well, not shying away from how annoying friends can sometimes be. I know I drive you crazy. <laughs> sometimes I know I call you lazy, and that's most times. But but you're always there for each other. It's actually kind of sweet. I remember listening to this song a lot, but not only was this her first song to not chart in the UK, it only peaked at number 73 in this country. Oh, this also features Becky G, who apparently two years later had a top 20 hit with something called Shower. Never heard of it. Singing in the shower. Oh right, that song. Jeez, that's a flashback. So how's the rest of the album? Well, here's the thing. Last month I was looking for something in my car and I realized I actually have the CD. I guess it was my sister's and over the last decade it somehow ended up in my car. So I've been listening to this album pretty much every single day on my way to work over the past month and really there's only one other memorable song on it. That being Grow Up featuring Buster Rhymes in his brief comeback in 2011. Besides that and the few singles, the rest of the album is meh. Anyway, also in 2012, she appeared on a Sean Kingston song called Rum and Ray Bands. You guys want to hear Sean Kingston do a dubstep song? Well, too bad. Rum and Ray Bands. Hey! Actually, I kind of like this one. It's way too similar to Girls on the Dance Floor by the Far East Movement, but I like that song, so a ripoff by a more talented artist I'm not opposed to. And shares fine on it. Well, she went on tour, of course, at one point performing with Hot Shell Ray, as I mentioned a year ago. Here she is performing with Taylor Swift back when she was just super famous and not the biggest musician on earth. But she also made some TV appearances. Here she is on Big Time Rush, which I know I said I would watch over two years ago, but I still haven't gotten around to it. But to answer your question, no, she's not a very good actress. Well, it turns out my director loved the video with you in it, and he released a cut of it online without my approval. But the fans loved it, and we got 10 million hits online. <laughs> 
Okay, well, I've got to run. I've got to see my director in the hospital. She was also a judge on some Disney Channel competition show based around Shake It Up. She also got married. I mean, good for her, I guess, but just not many people marry at 20 anymore. However, they're still together and have two children, so I guess it worked out. Anyway, she released her next album, Sorry I'm Late, in 2014. It apparently was supposed to be released in 2013, but after leaving her label due to creative differences, it got pushed back. The first single was called I Wish. I wish I was Wait, this seems familiar. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I had a girl who looked good. I would call her. Okay, I didn't expect her to rework a 20-year-old one-hit wonder hip-hop song, but okay. Oh, and I'm not stretching. Apparently, Skilo performed a duet with her on Jimmy Fallon, but I can't find that footage. Oh, the song's okay. It's about how hard dating can be when you're short, which I didn't know women worried about. I thought that was only a guy thing. It also has a guest verse from T.I. I'm not sure what kind of fella you like, but I can get you paradise have it however you like. Well, that's... Almost whatever you like. Hey, no talking reckless, girl. I'm certified, respect it, girl. You like to run your mouth when you about to learn a lesson, girl. Uh, I'm sorry. What? Well, this didn't do that great. It did nothing in the US and didn't even hit the top 100 in the UK. Next one at least got in the top 50. It's called Sirens. <laughs> Yeah, this one's actually pretty solid. I didn't expect her to be able to pull off a song with this much emotion, but she manages to. As for the rest of the album, well, it's certainly more mellow than the first one. I respect that, and it shows she actually is a really good singer. I just didn't find the songs that memorable. I guess my favorites would be Human and Alone With Me. So if you want to give it a chance, those are the two I would recommend to start with. She did manage one more minor hit in the US though. But even This is Demi Lovato's song, Really Don't Care, which peaked at number 26 in 2014, and Cher has a guest verse on it. I've actually listened to the song a lot. It's easily my favorite Demi Lovato song, and I swear, I had it on my iPod for over a year before it even charted. Seriously, this song is great. So after that, she left her label and took some time off before re-emerging in 2016 with the song Activated. I was expecting something more bombastic. Yeah, this song doesn't deserve a video this weird. This one's just boring. The song and video remind me of that Haley Steinfeld song, Starving, which no shit came out just a month later. So even if you did like this song, there's a much better version of it on the way. So she took some time off, but returned in 2018, and has released five songs between then and 2021. Well, someone wants to be Ariana Grande. The songs are fine. I'd say the best one is One Drink Away, which is a good anthem to use whenever you're being heckled by some asshole at the bar. Please don't touch me, just keep off me. Don't go asking for no favors. None of them were that successful, nor were the two songs she featured on, and since 2021 hasn't really released anything. No concert listed, at least not in this country. Doesn't seem to be posting much on Twitter, but seems pretty active on Instagram and TikTok. She seems happy, guessing she's taking some time off to raise her kids. So, good for her. I'll be honest, this was a pretty boring episode to research, but I'm glad to be making videos again. So, next time, how about we look at a movie that's turning 20 years old? See you next time, guys. Bye. I want you back, I want you back, want, want you, want you back. It's a Sonic helicopter. Yeah, why does she end the video like that?